In the ancient lands of Sumer, where the Tigris and Euphrates rivers cradled the birthplace of civilization, the people worshipped many gods. Among them, few were as revered as Enki, the wise and benevolent Sumerian god of water, wisdom, and creation. His name echoed through the temples and ziggurats of Mesopotamia and the Black Lands, spoken with reverence by kings and commoners alike. Like all the Anunnaki, meaning those who came from heaven, Enki was not an imagined Sumerian deity, which was once believed only a few years ago. However, recent modern interpretations and archaeological findings suggest that he was, in fact, an advanced extraterrestrial prince from another world. When the Anunnaki arrived on Earth 350,000 years ago, King Anu named the planet after his son, Ea, honoring his original birth name. Serving as Earth's guardian, he was the keeper of ancient secrets and the architect of humanity's destiny, with his civilization genetically modifying early humans to mirror their own form. Enki, the eldest prince of Nibiru, was born under King Anu's rule, the king of the galaxy. His mother, Namu, was a concubine and a biracial hybrid of Nibiru, a fact that lessened his chances of claiming the throne. Enki was married to his cousin, Ninki, also known as Damkina, daughter of his uncle and the former King Alalu. Despite his royal lineage, Enki's true dominion lay deep beneath the earth in the Abzu, where he was ordered by Enlil, his younger brother in command to rule, a mystical underworld of fresh waters and vast gold deposits. The Abzu was not just a body of water, but a reservoir of immense power and technology that he engineered from his arrival on Earth, the source of all rivers and streams. It was here, in his palace of shimmering water, crystals and light, that Enki reigned. This realm is where Enki allowed the children of men to attain immortality, often identified in ancient Greek mythology and Egyptian mythology as the underworld. In this capacity, Enki would later be known by many other names when the Anunnaki gods started new human civilizations throughout the thousands of years the Anunnaki resided here on Earth. Enki is known as the god Shiva or Varuna in Hinduism, Poseidon and Hades in Greek mythology, the snake in the Garden of Eden in the modern biblical texts, the Egyptian god known as Ptah, and in Nordic mythology as Loki. In the depths of the Sumerian Abzu, Enki's influence extended beyond the living, for it was also the realm of the dead. The halls of Amenti were rejuvenation chambers where the Anunnaki would come to renew their lives after each eon. Desiring power and knowledge, Enki attempted to gain influence over all realms. However, in his quest for more authority, he was outmaneuvered by Enlil and the other Anunnaki leaders, who convinced him that ruling the underworld was an esteemed role, allowing him access to secrets hidden in the deep. In some versions, the goddess Ereshkigal, ruler of the underworld, also played a role in anchoring Enki's connection to the underworld. Enki's ventures into her domain led to him unknowingly binding himself to its mysteries. Over time, he became more deeply tied to the underworld's governance, where he was seen as the intermediary between life and death, creation and destruction. In his underworld, Enki fathered a child with Ereshkigal, granddaughter of his half-brother Enlil. Their son was named Ningish Zida, later known as the Egyptian god Thoth, who would become a god of wisdom and magic. Ninki, his first wife, gave birth to his eldest son, who was named Marduk. His other children were Gibil, the god and engineer of magical artifacts and metallurgy, Dumuzi, the god of the Black Lands of Africa, and Nergal, who was the guide of Noah during the flood. His first human son before Noah, according to the Sumerian text, is Adapa, a blood ancestor to the first Adam and Eve. Adapa's son are in actuality Cain and Abel of biblical texts. The rivalry between Enki and Enlil is a core theme in Mesopotamian mythology, often fueled by Enki's dissatisfaction with the balance of power. When Enki arrived on Earth, the Persian Gulf extended inland, creating marshes that became his preferred domain. As a master engineer, 
Enki transformed these swampy areas into fertile lands by constructing canals, river embankments, and drainage systems. At the edge of these marshlands, he established Eridu, also called Haki, or the place of water fishes. His grand residence, the Iabzu, symbolized the Abzu's life-giving waters. Enki was frequently depicted sailing through the marshes, underscoring his strong connection to the aquatic and maritime realms when recorded by Sumerian scribes. As the patron of diviners and priests, Enki's knowledge of water's purifying qualities made him a key figure in ritual practices, exorcisms, and incantations used to dispel evil and cleanse leaders after foreboding events. His contributions to civilization included introducing agriculture, brick-making, and canal construction. In the myth Adapa and the South Wind, Enki prevents Adapa from gaining immortality, thus maintaining the balance between gods and mortals while preserving humanity's access to mystical knowledge. He also created the seven Apkalu, or sages, who served as intermediaries between the divine and human worlds, imparting wisdom to enrich civilization. A notable ancient declaration, likely attributed to Marduk, emphasizes Enki's divine lineage. The speaker declares himself the fertile seed, born of the great wild bull, signifying a potent source of creation and power, and identifies as Anu's firstborn son, affirming his authority and central status in the pantheon. The reference to himself as the great brother of the gods, emphasizing his leadership role. Enki is frequently portrayed as a bearded figure with a horned cap surrounded by streams filled with fish, symbolizing the abundance of the Abzu. However, it's essential to note that Enki and other leaders often altered their appearances before humans. Their lineage combines both lion mammalian and reptilian extraterrestrial humanoid traits, with a range of skin tones from black to white and distinct feline or reptilian features in their true forms. He is also linked to the crescent moon, due to its influence on tides. However, it is important to know that the texts describe Enki leaving Earth to explore the moon for several shahs with his son Marduk. While on the moon, Marduk tells his father Enki that he should have the rights and power to lead on Earth, and that Enlil, his brother, dispositioned him. In the myth, Ninurta and the Turtle, Enki captures Ninurta, son of Enlil, using a turtle ultimately reclaiming the powerful Tablet of Destinies that controls humanity's fate, which can have several dualistic meanings today. His many names, such as Denki, Damenki, and Nudimud, Thothme, the Dweller of Undal, reflect his multifaceted nature from being able to transition between the physical to celestial realm, and he is associated with the number 40, indicating his prominence in the Mesopotamian pantheon and the biblical texts of the modern-day Bible. Enki's enduring legacy is evident in texts from the early dynastic period through the writings of Barossus in the 3rd century BCE, where he was equated with the Greek god Kronos. Despite shifts in the Mesopotamian pantheon, Enki remained a benefactor of humanity and a protector of civilization. Enki ultimately aimed to ensure that his offspring Marduk, rather than Enlil's, would inherit divine authority with the help of his sister Ninhursag, also Anu's daughter, but not by Antu, further complicating divine succession rules. This celestial power struggle mirrors human affairs, as noted in Sumerian texts describing humanity's creation by Ninhursag through genetic modification techniques devised by Enki. When Enlil sought to punish humankind for their transgressions, it was Enki who intervened protecting them as their guardian and guide. Ninhursag, the eldest sister of both Enki and Enlil, collaborated with Enki to engineer humanity, blending their genetic expertise to create the first humans, Adamu and Eve, in a fertile paradise garden that was guarded by Anunnaki soldiers on each side. Enki, known for his wisdom, bestowed upon them the knowledge of good and evil, empowering them to understand moral complexities and make their own choices. This act, however, angered Enlil, Enki's brother, who believed such knowledge would disrupt the intended order. He labeled Enki a serpent and a trickster, accusing him of causing chaos among humanity. 
This rift between the brothers underscored the tension between knowledge and obedience, shaping humanity's destiny and the dynamics within the divine realm. One of the most profound moments in Enki's life where his compassion shone brightly was during the Great Flood. The gods, led by his half-brother Enlil, decreed that Earth must be purged of humanity's chaos. Enki, however, could not bear to see his creations destroyed. With a heart full of mercy, he warned his human son, Ziusudra, known to some as Noah, to build a great boat and save his family and the seeds of life. Enki's foresight and love for humanity spared the remnants of life on Earth, cementing his role as its protector. Enki's influence stretched far and wide from Babylon to Egypt, where his eldest son, Marduk, also known as Amun-Ra, would ascend to great power. Enki's wisdom and teachings shaped the foundations of civilization, imparting to humanity the divine knowledge of the Mi, sacred decrees that governed every aspect of life. Despite his gifts to the world, Enki's relationships with the other gods, particularly Enlil, were fraught with tension and rivalry. It was during this time that the Pyramid Wars erupted, a bitter conflict between the sons and daughters of Enki and those of Enlil. These battles, waged over territories, split the world into factions. Enki's followers ruled over the African peoples, while Enlil's descendants governed the Asiatics. The war raged on, and ultimately, Enki's tribe was defeated and sealed as the losers of the Pyramid Wars. The dominion of Earth was lost to Enlil's faction, largely due to Marduk's transgressions. His actions in defiance of the gods' order caused a shift in the balance of power, marking a tragic end to Enki's reign. As the dweller of Undal, Enki embodied the very essence of wisdom and creation, acting as a bridge between the celestial realms and earthly planes. His presence in the halls of Amenti symbolized the deep bond between the six-dimensional archangels and the physical world, granting him the power to share knowledge with both deities and humanity. In this sacred domain, Enki served as a guardian of ancient cosmic truths, revealing the mysteries of the universe and the secrets of life. He gained the trust of the Lemurian colonies of Lyra and Ramai, as well as the seven lords of the cycles, Archangels of the Sixth Dimension, known as the Children of Light. Ninhursag, also known as Ninma, the goddess of fertility and life, played a vital role in Enki's genetic modifications of humankind. According to the Enuma Elish and other ancient texts, Enki's initial attempts in the Anunnaki laboratories were met with failure. Using his profound knowledge of genetics and the sacred science of his people, he sought to merge the DNA of existing Homo erectus, Denisovans, and later Neanderthals with the divine essence of the gods. The results were unstable and fragile beings, physically strong yet intellectually limited. These early creations had short lifespans, their bodies unable to endure the harsh conditions of the world they were meant to inhabit. Undeterred, Enki and Nin Hersag adopted a more refined approach. Enki, wielding his mastery over the waters of life, infused the genetic material with divine energy, endowing it with the capacity to evolve and adapt. Nin Hersag, with her deep attunement to the cycles of nature, refined the process further, focusing on fertility of the test tubes they utilized blending it with the clay of the earth. Their final creation marked a breakthrough. Ninhursag bravely inseminated herself with the seed of the early hominids, giving birth to Adamu after a 10-month gestation, an idea born of Enki's wisdom. These new beings were both stronger and more intelligent, with adaptable bodies, a resemblance pleasing to the Anunnaki, and a resilience suited to survive their world's demands. Most Sumerian recordings on the Anunnaki are always dualistic due to missing translations. However, most portray Enki as a peaceful wise man. However, he had very powerful, lustful and sometimes egotistical desires. A duality that became particularly evident after his sister, Princess Ninhursag, who also was a chief medical officer, departed from him. Together, they shaped the future of Earth but Ninhursag eventually grew weary of Enki's relentless lust for her and his insistence on having a male child heir. 
she had given birth to a daughter named Ninsa, who became a goddess of vegetation. During this time, they discovered that Anunnaki born on Earth matured five times faster than human beings. Enki frequently expressed his love for Ninhursag, but when she embarked on an expedition for several shahs to seed Earth's trees and various plants from Nibiru, her absence left a void. In her absence, Enki turned his affections toward their daughter, Ninsa. Ninsa, born from the union of Enki and Ninhursag, embodied the abundance and fertility of the natural world. She represented the growth of plants and the nurturing life force that sustained all living beings. However, Enki, in his loneliness and unchecked desires of the semblance of Ninhursag, sought comfort in his own daughter. Without Ninhursag's guiding hand, Enki unknowingly fathered a child with Ninsa, leading to the birth of Ninkura, the goddess of the mountains. Ninhursag returned and was enraged at Enki's repeated transgressions. Enki's violation of natural boundaries was a direct affront to the balance of life that Ninhursag cherished. Despite the birth of their daughter Ninkura, who symbolized the Earth's strength and stability, Ninhursag could no longer ignore Enki's reckless behavior. Enki's cycle of overreach continued when he looked towards the daughter of Ninkura, he approached her and fathered another child, Utu, the goddess of spinning and weaving. Utu represented cosmic order. But before Enki could repeat his mistake, Ninhursag intervened. She warned Utu to resist Enki's advances, but it was too late. Utu succumbed, and the union brought about great suffering. Seeing the damage Enki had wrought, Ninhursag, filled with both anger and pity, returned to intervene. She cursed Enki, not with words of hatred, but with the weight of his own actions. Ninhursag extracted Enki's seed from Utu's body, and from it gave birth to eight sacred plants, each representing a vital aspect of nature disrupted by Enki's recklessness. In his arrogance, Enki consumed the plants, unaware of the consequences. His body became stricken with illness as the forces of nature turned against him. His viscera also had unending painful sensations. The very essence of life that he had manipulated and violated poisoned him, symbolizing the peril of unchecked power. As Enki lay dying, the Anunnaki gods pleaded with Ninhursag to save him. Though deeply angered, Ninhursag was still the goddess of life, and she could not ignore the cries of the other gods. To heal Enki, Ninhursag ordered her chief medical officers, each to engineer a cure for his ailments. Nintai, Lady of Life, healed his rib. Ninkasi, Lady of Beer, healed his throat. Nansha, Goddess of Justice, restored balance. Azimua, Goddess of Healing, mended his limbs. Nazi, Goddess of the Goatfold, healed his muscles. Through these divine daughters, Ninhursag not only healed Enki, but restored balance to the world that had been destabilized by his transgressions. However, despite healing Enki, Ninhursag left him for good, retreating into the mountains to oversee the forces of life and fertility. She planted over 700 hundreds Anunnaki planets of Nibiru. Enki, though healed, was left with the weight of his past actions. He realized that his unchecked desires had caused suffering not only to himself, but to the daughters of the gods and the natural order they represented. Ninhursag's departure left Enki without his vital counterbalance, and he was forced to reflect on the consequences of his actions. Enki, often revered as a god by the ancient Sumerians, was neither a god in the omnipotent sense, nor a flawless being. Although mythological texts describe him as divine, Enki was, in essence, an advanced extraterrestrial from the Anunnaki civilization. Possessing extraordinary knowledge and technology, he appeared godlike to early humans, but he was ultimately a complex, flawed individual, driven by both wisdom and personal desires. Enki's compassion for humanity often brought him into conflict with his half-brother Enlil, highlighting a fundamental difference in priorities. While Enlil valued order and obedience, Enki championed growth, freedom, and the nurturing of human potential. This empathy led Enki to advocate for humanity, even when it contradicted the directives of other Anunnaki beings from Nibiru, Orion, and Sirius. His expertise in genetic engineering and civilization building was balanced by his own ambitions, 
and his legacy became one of mixed fortunes. Though he provided humanity with wisdom, his actions also introduced complexities and moral dilemmas that people would have to resolve on their own. Among humans, those with significant traces of Anunnaki heritage are most often descended from Enki's lineage. If you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe to our channel for more ancient myths and astral legends. Please check our references in description for further research on this topic. May the eternal light forever guide your path. See you on the next episode.